Howdy, y'all. Hi, guys. It's Ryan. And Angela. From RA Music. That's right. RA Music, deep in the heart of Texas. Mm -hmm. Your Yeehaw. favorite mom and pop guitar shop and lesson studio. Yay. In the world. <laughs> and That's right. it's time to answer your questions. It is. Let's get to it. Woohoo! First question, Cam Deman. Hello, Cam Deman. Mm -hmm. Says, hey, RNA, hope all's well. Deep in the heart of Texas. <laughs> it is like 60 degrees deep in the heart of Texas on February 1st. We we're just talking about it. Yes, it it's is. Negative 20 in Ohio, which is why Texas is better. Uh, my question this week is mostly for Ryan. Mm -hmm. I've been a new daddy for about seven weeks now, and I'm finding it hard to stay committed to practicing guitar. Mm -hmm. My wife is a stay-at-home mother with baby demand, and when I come home from my eight to four job, I feel ob obligated to jump into the fire with her, and help as much as I can so she can rest as well. Good smart. plan. Smart Good plan, <laughs> my friend. Very smart. Um, how do I find a happy medium between staying dedicated to my love of guitar and music while being there for my wife and daughter? Thoughts? Hashtag KTMA. Mm. Oh, man. Cam. Get rid of the kid. <laughs> Hush, Paul. They're not going to get rid of the kid. Anyways. There's the bitter bass player's <laughs> advice. Don't listen to him. He doesn't know. He does. Uh, I, can, I can sympathize uh, with you, man, because there's been times in our lives where I didn't play guitar very much because it was just busy, like working, mm -hmm. family. And then tired. And tired, you know. <laughs> So it, it can be a challenge for sure. Mm -hmm. But you know, I, I think an important thing to remember is like, you know, everything's a season. <laughs> Everything in your life comes in seasons, all right? And you may have seasons where you have a little bit less time to do like your hobbies. Mm -hmm. um, but there's always, there's always ways around that too. You know, like there's a lot of people who are super into fitness. Mm -hmm. Like I'm, I'm into fitness pizza in my mouth. Right. But some people are into like jogging and working out like Paul just did mm -hmm. like, not he's not into every it every once in a while he does it <laughs> it's like no I just this is just something I have to it's like brushing your teeth you better you have to do it yeah. <laughs> at a certain point um, but you know it might be one of those things where you, I don't know if you can get up earlier like earlier than normal I know that kind of sucks but like Angela's in a group of like ladies who get up and work out like at 530 in the morning I'm like what are you doing mm -hmm. that's crazy talk but that's it's an important part of their life, mm -hmm. and it's the only time in the day where they can actually get it done is to get up at five thirty before their day starts. Children, kids, and half the time school. their children wake up and join them at five thirty in the morning. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I believe if it's important enough, you will make time for it. Yeah, yeah, you'll find a way. Now you may have to be creative, and I'm not easy. You yes. know, I'm not saying it's easy to get up at five o'clock and practice guitar for thirty minutes. <laughs> Okay, so this is where I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump in because most guys don't know how to multitask. And y'all are very compartmental. So whenever you're doing one thing that you think that only you can do is that one thing. But women know how to be very creative with all the things that are going because we are always pulled in multi-directions, especially being a mother. So my suggestion for you is what I would do if I was doing like work on a computer and I had a little one at my side. If you have those little baby bouncy seats, chairs, especially now when they are sleeping most of the time, mm -hmm. if you can get them bouncing in one of those baby bouncing seats and in a room where your guitar is, as long as it's not, you're not just shredding heavy loud with the amp going and you're just plucking away. If you could put your headphones on and just play, your baby will learn the music and appreciate the music and listen to you and watch you. And it'll be something that can actually entertain them. You can sing to the baby. There's so many things that you can do. Teach them mixolydian scales. Now there, yeah, exactly. There's just little things. You can sing the alphabet song. You can learn songs that, you know, that would help the baby, whatever you want to do. And even whenever they start becoming crawling age, walking age, bring the playpen in where you're at. Mom can still go off and do her thing because the playpen is in where you are. And you can sit there and just play. Um, you can, like uh, Robert Baker did, did this. He would have his son in his videos with him. So mm -hmm. it, it adds to like even your, your income or whatever you want to do with YouTube. Just be creative. You can have your baby strapped to your chest. 
you know, and play in front of it and let the baby pick at it and just make it a thing where you and him are, it's a boy, right? It's a hurt. It's a hurt. A little girl where she is enjoying it because girl, she, girl especially demands. a girl, girls love their dads. Bo boys cling to mamas. Girls cling to dads. It's the opposite sex thing. So whenever you're with her, just look at her, smile at her, play your guitar for her, learn songs that you can sing to her, and make her a part of the thing. Make her a part of your life. That's why when mom, whenever, whenever, yeah, whenever we would, you know, whenever we're doing things, we always have our kids near us. They're always on our legs. We learn to cook and iron and do all these things with children always clinging to us, use the restroom with kids. <laughs> Take showers with your children playing either in the shower, <laughs> put toys in the shower with you while you're taking a shower. Whatever you have to do in order to make it work, you can do it. I promise you. Mm -hmm. You do not have to sacrifice. You don't have to get up extra early or stay up extra late. Incorporate the child with you and you'll make, you'll make it happen. Now, you might have to give up television. You might have to give up time where you're scrolling through Facebook or doing things that actually suck your time. Yeah. But... You can make it happen. I promise you. You can do it. No video games. That's true, because when, uh, when Nicholas was a baby... Yeah, you did it all the time. Yeah, because Angela, she worked like 16-hour shifts at the hospital on the weekends, and I had Nicholas while she was working, because and while I was in class, she was watching Nicholas. So on the weekend, I still had to practice. So mm -hmm. in our crappy apartment, you know, <laughs> I had... I had my little practice pad, and I'm going through my drum percussion stuff, or, you know, I play guitar a little bit too, but, yeah, you know, with a little bit. bouncy seat... And we had the little crib and stuff. And so Nicholas, when he was old enough and big enough, he'd be in the bouncy seat. And we'd, we'd watch, you know, Veggie Tales or something together. Mm -hmm. So we're sitting there together. I mean, I was with him all day. Mm -hmm. You know, we were in the same room together all day. He would take a nap, or, you know, or whatever. They take naps. Yeah. <laughs> but but I could practice. Especially now. You know, I couldn't like practice full, like, full on drum set, drum stuff. But I could practice yeah. on a practice pad. It'd be like practicing guitar, you know, without it plugged in. I mean, yeah. Right. What she said, because she's real smart. Yeah, and get whenever the he got the bass, she'll be playing along with you the next month. Yeah, get her a bass. <laughs> with, by the time she's one, she'll have nailed it. She'll be like the next yes. flea. Yeah. But you can like you can go through your you know chords and teach them A through G and just it's so it's such a great time right now. You have a very unique opportunity that most people don't take advantage of, where you can teach your child music while you're you were doing it um, also. So I would take advantage of that. Yeah. It's got to get creative. Can yeah. to man. You can do it, buddy. You can totally do it. We believe <laughs> in you. Thanks for the question, dude. Very, very great question. But good for you for yeah. letting your wife have a break. And yeah. Very smart. Smart for the do marriage. Do that. Very smart. And all, maybe eventually you'll have more babies. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you have to find time for that, too. You, yeah. you will find time. There's time. For that. It's been going on for ages. Yeah. It happens. <laughs> Humanity hasn't stopped yet. Uh, <laughs> next question. Jeremy surfing. Jeremy the surfing alien. I was going to say surfing with the alien, but it's Jeremy the, the surfing, surfing alien. That would be a good band. <laughs> yes. It probably yeah. is. His well, band. surfing with the alien, it was a. Uh, what's his face? Mm. I just went blank. People will be like, you don't know. Uh, We're tired. It's plays in Chicken Foot, the guitar player. Joe Satriani. Okay. I couldn't remember Joe Satriani's name. <laughs> it's it's been right. a long day. All these guitar players are going to be like, you suck. Whatever. Uh, Ryan, what is the highest quality and most playable electric guitar that you have ever played? Man, Jeremy the Surfing Alien, that is a really hard question. Highest quality and most playable. <sighs> That's tough. I don't know if I can. I don't know if I can decide on that one because I've played some pretty nice guitars, mm -hmm. um, some really nice ones. I have one of my students uh, or former students, Chris, got a oh, incredible PRS yeah. <laughs> McCarty five nine four. Like it was like money, like money guitar, and he let me borrow it for a week. Because he was going on vacation. He's like, hey, you want to babysit? I'm like, yes. <laughs> but then I was kind of afraid to play it. Because I'm like, "Yeah, <laughs> this is not my guitar. And it's super nice. And it was great. It's very cool. I mm -hmm. mean, if any of y'all have ever played the core model swanky PRS, is, they're, they're great. Uh, my friend Christian, who has a music studio, a recording studio <laughs> here in Canton, he, he had a pretty sweet 10-top PRS that I got to hang on to for a weekend. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It was great. 
Um, I got uh, I got a little little uh, the Ocho right here. Oh, oh, my USA Custom Shop mm -hmm. Washburn. See, it says Custom Shop, number eight of ten. Uh, from the amazing Boogie Street Guitars in Pittsburgh, PA, which is close to Ohio, mm -hmm. um, which is now long, no longer in business, but this is ridiculous, like ridiculous. This part of ridiculous, like, and it was it was some. Play on Tom's leather. Is it leather? Huh? Well, I played on James Hetfield's Personal Explorer one time. Yeah, yeah. That's true. That's what I'm saying. At the, uh, uh, not the NAMM show. That's what I'm saying. At, uh, at uh, Metallica's concert. I just scratched my thumb. This one's quite nice. This, now this, just so you all know that I'm not super rich, this was a gift. Mm -hmm. So, but it's a super swanky guitar. It's killer. Um, I like it. Mm -hmm. What else? You have me as a friend, that makes you rich. I'm, I'm rich in friendship. Love. I'm rich in excess bitterness. Um, uh, Robert Baker's, it's not my bitterness, his bitterness. So, uh, Robert Baker's Cronus. Mm. Uh, when they did the clinic, the Acacia Clinic here, and he, that's when he got it. He didn't actually see it until then. Mm -hmm. That thing was stinking nice. Like, Pictures of it and video of it that he does is like, wow, that's a cool guitar. But like in yeah. person, it was like, holy moly. So, mm, talk about high quality, you know, the Washburn Custom Shop, the PRSs, uh, Robert's Acacia is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. um, most playable. Hmm, I don't know. Those are great. I mean, I love the crap out of my, my 91 Gibson Explorer. Like it just feels... It feels like home, you know. But um, I think that's because it's what I learned on and played on. But I'll tell you what, the, uh, oh, this little RNA Music CMG Custom number three right here. Mm -hmm. Those CMG Customs. Uh, each one that comes in, I kind of play test them. And I was, I was unboxed that one. The owner, Lee, is coming to get it tomorrow. Tomorrow, tomorrow Lee's going to come pick that up. It's already sold. But I was playing it yesterday. Y'all probably saw the video, and I was just like, Wow, this plays really good. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. It, that's a really difficult question to answer, man. Um, I don't know if I can answer it. I would need to get all of those guitars together again and just play them one after the other. <laughs> I guess it's a video for next week. That would be a video. If I can get Chris to bring me his PRS and Robert to send me I'm his sure Cronus. And uh, <laughs> um, Art can send me his. Actually, Art is going to bring me his Acacia because I want to do some videos with it. <laughs> Nice. And, uh, yeah. I don't think I can get a hold of the tin top again, but I don't think I can get James to let me play his uh, Metallica ESP again. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty cool. I need some water. Um, got some. <laughs> Want me to go get you some water? Yes, please. I'll be right back. Thanks. My mouth is really dry. <laughs> These pretzels are making me thirsty. <laughs> you guys remember that? I don't know. Right. Vaguely. I was parched. Yeah. So I don't know, man. That's really... That's a really... That's a hard one to answer. It's a tricky question. My new Les Paul Standard 1996 feels really good. I, I like it, it a lot. So. Uh, <laughs> thanks for the question, man. I, I don't know. Why don't you guys tell us... What is the highest quality, most playable guitar you guys have played? I'd like to read those comments. That'd be interesting. Yeah, you guys leave a comment below with that. I, I can't decide for me, so. Thanks for the question, Jeremy. Yeah. Next question, a Driddle. The hmm? Riddle. Uh, <laughs> which will come first, the Warefoot album or the new Tool album? Mm. Like, is Tool working on an album? I, I think they're I, done with it. Oh, it hasn't been released yet. Mm -hmm. I've, I've seen a lot of comments lately about that. Well, Paul says Tool's album is done, but Ooh. when will they release it is the question. Right. Mm, probably, probably Tool. Yeah. You know who did release an album? 
I do know someone who's released an EP. An EP. Of, it's five songs. Hey, right? that's Four. pretty great. I think. I, I know. Like who, who? Why don't you tell these me? Five songs Pat ahead. David Music. From Australia. These five songs ahead of us. Good eye, Mike. <laughs> and they're great. I love them. Crikey. They're the best, man. They're really good. So, and, and he only re-recorded his album three times. Because oh, wow. he's very meticulous. <laughs> he's, he's, he's very a super focused, meticulous. Very meticulous person. Yeah, I can do Love it better. It. Let's re-scrap the whole thing. I'm like, yes. <laughs> but I'm glad. Yeah. Love it. Yeah, Pat just no, put on it's just it's like edgy, but like familiar, and I don't know, like haunting kind of. It's it's interesting. I and like there's it. guitar playing too. Yeah, but it's just like it's that real like, it kind of has like an eeriness to it. Yeah, you know, I don't know. I like. I it. like it. It's cool. It's really cool. We have an, our our CDs on the way. We're actually going to get a physical copy. Yeah, I'm so excited about that. Anyways, there it is. 2019 Nam Tools drummer said rough release date mid April 2019. Did you Google that? Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> So probably Tool's album, uh, Warefoot is still working on theirs. Uh, I talked to Adam a lot about it. I mean, they're working on it. It's yeah, in the works. Like it's, but it's they've awesome. re-recorded their drums before, and they've re-recorded guitar parts, and they've had to. So I, I'm I'm going to bet the Tool album comes first. <clears throat> then Warefoot, and then possibly Awkward Pause, followed by the Nobodies, followed by the Alphys Music Project. I think Alphys should go before the Nobodies. Probably so. <laughs> Probably. Uh, thanks for the question, Jirtle. Uh, good times, man. Terry Starks with the next question. Mm -hmm. I, I'm going to rotate because... I know. It's like a little kid on a bar I know. Stool. When I was a kid in my dad's barber shop, I would just woo, spin around in the chairs until like, stop spinning in the chairs. That's why they're there, right? They're fun. <laughs> now I'm an adult. I do what I want. Right? Whatever. Whatever. Swivel when I look at you. Uh, sorry. Ow. Ow. See? I kind of do what I want. See? I don't Fail. do it very Fail. well. Your mom nope. is a nice lady. That's right. <laughs> She's not even watching. <laughs> Terry Starks, I know y'all didn't go to Nam this year, but I know y'all have your ear to the ground. So what do you hear about the new Gibson? Debbie? And what new... <laughs> <laughs> the new Debbie Gibson album? I love it. No, it's uh, it's uh, part of it. Never be it Mall rats close. forever. <laughs> What's and what new innovations are you excited about? What do you think about the DIP? Hashtag KTMA. I don't know what DIP is. Yep. Well, I know that, but I'm like, <laughs> I know. I don't know if that's some I know new what technology. PYT is. <laughs> Did you say PYT? Pretty young yeah. thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, it's kind of funny because leading up to NAM, we actually had our student concert recital Sunday mm -hmm. night. So it was the same weekend as NAM, we were gearing up for our students to do their big winter we were concert. Busy. We were super busy. So like for the last several weeks, I haven't really been paying a lot of attention to this. I'm just now like after this past Sunday, after our concert, student concert was over, I'm watching people's NAM videos now. Sorry, that was a big one. I was trying to hold it up, but I couldn't. Sneezies. Yes. I've been watching people's NAM videos. Dang it. Anthony's NAM videos. He barely has any actually. I don't think I watched any. Flip side videos. But I watched the... Uh, <coughs> bless you. Sounds like... God bless you. <laughs> I watched Ola England's NAM vlog. Mm -hmm. uh, it was pretty cool. Um, as far as the new stuff that really came out, the only thing that really caught my attention was there was some stuff from Rev Amplification. They have a new little kind of lunchbox amp that's going to be reasonably affordable. That's cool. Like $1,100, $1,200. Like lunchbox? It looks... 
Does it look like an A Team lunchbox? That would be really cool. Yeah, GI Joe lunchbox. No. See, that's what somebody needs to come up with. Eighties lunchboxes, but they're amps. But they're real lunchbox amps. I would buy one. It's like a cigarette, like a cigarette box guitar. Yeah. Why cigarette? Why you cigar? Cigar box. I'm not. A cigarette. Cigar box guitar. Cigarettes. I don't know. Cigars. Cigarettes. Cigarettes are cartons. So new amps from Rev and the new pedals from Rev. Those guys are super cool. I really enjoyed hanging out with them at the Dallas International Guitar Festival. They had a booth right next to Vola and uh, they're really cool. Like Derek, the owner, one of the owners, mm -hmm. super awesome. Uh, Kyle, who's like their marketing business guy, super cool. <laughs> so I really like Rev. We, we still haven't bought in to the products, but uh, one of these days, we will. Um, trying to think of what else. Some new pickups from EMG. They have a new passive pickup set, mm -hmm. the Prashant Aswani set. I forget what the name of it is actually called. Um, <laughs> speaking of Nam, <laughs> Ike from Flipside Music is texting me. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you what he texted me. I, I read it. But that's pretty funny. <laughs> I'm filming. Ask RNA. Like. Gah. Gah. <laughs> that's hilarious, though. <laughs> I totally lost my train of thought. Oh. Uh, I think it's called the Deliverance <laughs> set, maybe. Yeah, yeah, no, not not that kind of other ones. I, I I can't remember. I know it's Prashant's signature set. I met I met Prashant at Nam too at the EMG booth. Super cool guy, mm -hmm. the amazing guitar player. Um, so a couple of new products from EMG. Um, it's a text bomb. <laughs> I got you on silent, Ike. You're not text bombing. So there, <laughs> there. I put on the silencer, Anthony. Um, I haven't really paid a lot of attention to Gibson. I mean, I've seen pictures of the new finishes and stuff. And the guitars, they look really pretty. But, you know, it's one of those things I would have to put my hands on them. Oh! Oh! Sorry, I just remembered. Some new Schechter guitars. Mm. Yeah, from the Schechter booth. They have the Apocalypse, Apocalypse. V and the Apocalypse E1 and um, mm -hmm. the Sun Valley Super Shredder PTs, which are like tellies with Floyd Roses and... Yeah, Schechter's got some sick guitars coming out uh, <laughs> for 2019. So I'm pretty excited about that. Schechter, EMG, Rev. Those were the things that really caught my attention. At NAM, Terry. Thanks, man. <laughs> Appreciate the question. Next question. Walking Dead 1369. Ryan, you guys were talking about strap locks, but have you tried the Daddario locking strap? Yeah, I know, a couple of questions. <laughs> uh, clips right on factory strap buttons and the one I have seems to hold really well mm -hmm. I have actually they've had a couple different ones come out yeah I have those and they don't fit every single guitar for example neener, neener. my USA custom shop very expensive uh, limited edition Washburn it's got super oversized strap buttons and so crink, wouldn't work wouldn't work. And that was the problem. I had a couple of guitars that they wouldn't actually fit on. And I didn't really like how they kind of rubbed on the finish. Um, so, I mean, it worked. <laughs> it worked on some of my guitars, but it didn't work on all of my guitars. And I still have them here. And I've actually, some of my guitars that are less pricey and not already scratched up and banged up, I'll mm -hmm. actually put that on. <laughs> uh, Ike said, say hello to Angela and Polly Walnuts for me. I don't know if that's his Italian nickname for you. Hey, Polly Walnuts. <laughs> I don't know what the walnuts is for, but. You got a mic on. I can't say what I want to say. <laughs> hey, Polly well, Walnuts. I have been called worse. <laughs> <laughs> He's been called <laughs> um, So, yeah, actually, I've tried those Walking Dead. And sometimes, depending on the guitar, sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. I just always use strap locks, and I kind of. I kind of like those. Um, thanks for the question. There's another one here in a minute. 
From Walking Dead. Walking Dead and Joseph, Joseph McCarthy had a couple of questions. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the next question is, just fun guitar. Ah, so I'm not alone with the squeak, but that's okay. You're right, it's not a big deal, but I do find it a little distracting sometimes. So new questions. One, do you like Frank's hot sauce? I love it. <laughs> I put that on everything. That's the commercial. Oh. Yeah. I don't think I've ever tried Frank's hot sauce. It's good. Is it good? Mm-hmm. I don't think I've ever had it. I just hear a commercial all the time. I've had Some it. Some old lady saying it. Mm-hmm. I put it on every. I don't. I don't really like eat hot sauce. I like hot sauce, especially on like pizza. Yeah. Why would you? Mm, okay. You put pizza, tacos, chicken, um, just whatever you want to just kind of spice it up. Spaghetti. <laughs> I'm more of a sriracha guy. Sriracha. <gasps> but yeah, yeah. I, I've it's never good. tried it. It's I don't. Good. I don't like hot sauce. I don't. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like what is it? Her, her Des, Hernandez. Hernandez. Yes. Hernandez. Hot sauce. It's like, like legitimate. Whenever we would have any time at the flea market down here, um, they would. Yeah. Every Hispanic person would like. Do you have <laughs> Hernandez like, hot sauce? Yes, we do. Because they would put it on and the they corn. Would go, it, it would put it would on turkey it. legs. Oh my gosh, so good <laughs> on roasted corn, and. Um, tater twisters so good good stuff yeah so Mm -hmm. there you go have some in the fridge right now (laughs) question number two what new music is coming out in 2019 has you looking forward to its release for me the new rammstein album apparently they recorded it using jerry Cantrell's jj friedman amp and my wife is hoping we finally get the new tool album this year hashtag ktma hashtag ktma keep the music alive so, uh, new music 2019 that I'm really looking forward to. Well, the Pat David album came out. Super excited for Pat. So that's already off the list. Mm-hmm. Um, Warefoot album. Super excited about that. Mm-hmm. Mm, Awkward Pause has an EP <laughs> that's supposed to be done like, sometime. I think I might have found a singer. This year. That'll be pretty amazing. You really, I, I can't think of any big, like big bands that I'm like, oh man, they're putting on a record. I'm so excited. <clears throat> Dolly Rods. The Dolly Rods. You're yeah. looking forward. To You're it. looking forward to the Dolly Rods. He asked for a ticket. <laughs> I just didn't want you to go by yourself and be a lonely, bitter bass player at a concert by your. I was gonna surprise him. He's like, buy me a ticket. I already did. He's like, I got my Dolly Rods tickets. And I was like, sweet. When is it? like March or something? March. 20 something. It's a Sunday. I can go on a Sunday. I'm like, hey, well, get me a ticket. I'll pay you back. He's like, I already got you one. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Sounds good. Sounds good. Uh, so apparently the Dolly Rots have an album coming out this year. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm really, you know, the thing, like for me personally, it's like, you know, Pat's record that came out, super cool, because we're really good friends, and that's exciting for me to see him release music. The Warefoot thing will be super great when it comes out, I hope, because I really like those guys. I'm friends with them. I mean, we're friends, first of all. Mm -hmm. Uh, But I do actually like their music. (laughs) That's kind of fun, you know, to like be friends with someone. I like their friends. Their music just sucks. (laughs) I like Paul's music. Paul, I just sort of tolerate his, you know, but because we're good friends. Yeah, I get a lot of complaints, honestly, about my music. It's like, it's so catchy. It sticks in your head. I'm like, that's the point. It's so dang catchy. (laughs) Drives me crazy. I can't forget this song. Do, 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 do. This is my bitter, bitter song. <laughs> this is my bitter, bitter song. <clears throat> he changed it. It's minor now. So it's, minor key. it's not happy, it's happy cooler. song anymore. It's bitter, bitter song. It's still happy. happy song. <laughs> <laughs> it's happy in a very sad way. Um, <laughs> but really, if we can get our EP, uh, mine and Paul's EP, mm-hmm. Awkward Pause, P A W Z, because we like cats. Anything. No. It's awkward pause. P-A-U-Z-E. Oh, pause. Like a pause in time. Okay. Mm-hmm. I was under the... Trying to hit on a girl. And uh, awkward cats. That's I was called. under the impression it was about kitty cats this whole time. <gasps> One more. Uh, camera stopped. I was saying Ola England has a solo album coming out. It's all instrumental. So I'm pretty excited about that. Because I don't like, you know, 
the real heavy cookie. I like heavy music, but I don't like the Cookie Monsters. Serious for cookie. Cookie is for me. Oh, we're gonna write a Cookie Monster song actually. <laughs> but in general, in general, I don't like the Cookie Monster vocals so so much. But Ola's solo album is all like instrumental guitar stuff. So I'm excited about that. Mm -hmm. um, but really, being able to do <laughs> the Kitty Cat record with Paul yeah. and then... <laughs> <laughs> what? Cats are cool. Yeah. Um, and that's what's going to be on the front. It's going to spell awkward pause, P-A-U-Z, with a cat on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And not pause. What's well, funny <laughs> is because Ola England, you know, he's releasing this solo thing, and he put up a picture of like the album cover, which is not the actual album cover. And it was just like this little kitty cat, like a little baby kitten. And I was like... Because kittens are tight. Kittens are metal. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, not the actual photo. But then everybody's like, this better be the actual cover photo because that would be hilarious. Kittens are super metal. They mm -hmm. are. Um, but yeah, finishing finishing the EP with Paul and then finishing my own music, which I keep so you know, putting on the background. Which is good if he would finish it. People seem to like it. I think it's crap, but you know. I guess it's better to put your crap out there than keep it in. You're better out than in. <laughs> better out than in. That's a good analogy. Get yeah. your crap out. Get the crap out of there and let people judge your crap. You need a musical enema. <laughs> Come on, Just I, get it out I of there. I tell you this. Uh, yeah. Well, it's true. I would you would. The brutally, brutally honest friends. Yeah. <laughs> Paul, the brutally honest bass player. <laughs> that's actually true. We might change your name from bitter bass player to brutally honest bass player. <laughs> when you're not bitter anymore and you find true happiness, you can be a brutally honest bass player. What is true happiness? Being brutally honest. <laughs> Crushing always, people's spirits that, no, with always. honesty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Crushing people's souls with honesty. Yep. <laughs> um, that, that's what I'm looking forward to. Um, you know, there's no big time bands. I'm like, oh man, I can't wait for another record from those guys. So. That's it for me. What are you guys most looking forward to this year, 2019? Anything? No. no? Mm -mm. I haven't really listened to anything lately. So. <laughs> yeah. We're too busy working in music to listen to music. Yeah. Um, oh, oh yeah, and that was all the questions from Just Fine Guitar. Thanks, man. Uh, next question, Joe McCarthy. Hi, Joe. <laughs> Yo, Joe. I was about to. Ah, I beat you to it. I'm a better G.I. Joe. I was burping. Sorry. <laughs> um, Joe has a question that goes right along with Walking Dead's question. Joe says, what are those two Firebird-shaped guitars over your right shoulder in this week's video? Just curious, by the way. I like the matching Gibsons over your left shoulder. Well, the Gibsons are gone. But these are here. And Walking Dead says, um... Hi, guys. What are those very nice-looking Firebird-style guitars behind you there? These. Well, these... Are uh, <clears throat> diamond diamond guitars hail fires. This one actually came from Arnie Music. I mean, it's here now. Mm -hmm. um, but this was originally an RNA hail fire when we were diamond dealers. We're not currently carrying diamond. Yeah. Super sick. These, these three, uh, now there's three. There's a Silver Burst, there's the Room of Tears, but a freaky one that's not normal because the colors are different. Um, and these are all Adam Lamar from Warefoot. He's working on a record that might come out this year. These are his personal guitars. Been rocked on stage. This one's got a little, little battle damage ding right there. These are all Adam's Warefoot fiddles. And uh, he is now playing Schechter, mm -hmm. which he got from me. Good call. Yeah, Schechter's great. Not that there's anything wrong with Diamond, but uh, he's kind of doing the Schechter thing now. And so these are his guitars, and they're here on consignment at r &E Music. So they technically belong to Adam, but I'm trying to help him sell them. <clears throat> and these are all played like on stage or recorded or whatever. So they're... Adam's Warefoot guitars. What's the price? Oh, 
Good question, Mr. DeJaro. The green room of tears um, is 600 bucks plus shipping if we have to ship it, right? Shipping ain't free because somebody's got to pay for it. Mm -hmm. Right, so, so 600, which is a good. Uh, the caramel, caramel, this one was nice. This is 500. Now this one comes with a diamond dragon skin case. So it does come with a case for 500 bucks. Little, little dingy ding right there because I mean these were played. Little dingy ding right there because they've actually been rocked on stage. <laughs> Which one? They've been rocked or little dingy ding? <laughs> um, and then the silver burst one. It's hard to see the silver because it's. I want that one. Reflecting. Do you want the silver burst? It depends. I'm waiting to hear what you're. Uh, this one is faux hunted, and comes with the case. It's not the dragon skin case, but. Uh, it's pretty cool though. We could probably we could probably work a deal. I Mr. remember when that one first came in. I was like, I like that guitar. Mm -hmm. uh, my cool. son Nicholas has a Hellfire that's the black and red. We could probably work out a arrangement, Mr. DeJaro, on that Hellfire. These are super light, so it's that's nice. Ugh, get up there. The thing I do like about those diamonds is they're not backbreakers, so they're you know they're not heavy guitars. They're they're light and comfortable, mm -hmm. and so that's what they are. These are consignment deals for Adam. Originally, we weren't going to do any shipping. It was going to be like hey local, but um, <clears throat> I kind of thought you know what? Well, we have a lot of you guys mm -hmm. who watch our videos and follow us on Instagram and Facebook, and if one of our regular viewers, you know, is interested, you know, we could probably make an exception and ship. I mean, I've shipped hundreds of guitars, so. But you gotta pay for the shipping, so. There you go, killer deals on all of them. All been rocked. I think the Silver Burst, he wrote, a, he did a lot of writing for their EP on the Silver, but. There you go, Joe and Walking Dead. And then another question from Joe McCarthy. Should I put Fishman Fluence? Eight o'clock. Eight o'clock. Eight o'clock. Do you know where your children are? Yes, they're with me right now. I know, I know where mine are. <laughs> Joe, should I put Fishman Fluence Classic Pickups or Modern Pickups in my Cronus? What would you or Robert recommend? I'm so excited you asked Joseph because uh, Joseph has ordered a custom... I was about to say something. Uh, Cronus from Acacia. <laughs> Joe has ordered a custom Acacia Cronus from us and there's actually some potentially pretty exciting stuff that might happen with this build for Joseph but he was trying to decide I think we've actually already decided before filming this video uh, I think we're gonna go with the Fishman Fluence classic pickups which is what Robert has in his uh, relic <laughs> Cronus which sounds great so I, I agree with Robert, uh, Joe. I think the classic ones will be a great one to go in that guitar, actually. So that's what I suggest and agree with Robert and agree with you because I think you've already decided that's what you want. <laughs> mm -hmm. But yeah, good choice. I think it's a good choice, man. I'm, I'm really excited to, to hear them in that guitar. I've only played one set of Fishman uh, pickups and that was truck driver Sean brought in his Keith Marrow signature seven string and I played it just a little bit and they're pretty nice they're all right I mean I like EMG but the Fishmans they're okay they're all right Pat likes them so there you go and final question speaking of the wizard <clears throat> Adam Lamar <laughs> said that's a sharp looking Les Paul do you plan to get a diamond plate pick guard for it so it will match the Explorer even more? <sighs> I hadn't even considered that option, Adam. Because some of you may or may not know, I have a Gibson Explorer and it has a black diamond plate pick guard custom that I had made. Like real diamond plate. It's not plastic. Mm -hmm. It's not vinyl. It's not crazy. It's like legit real black diamond plate. Um, and it looks awesome. It hadn't even occurred to me to have a black diamond plate pit guard put on the new Les Paul. Mm -hmm. 
until you brought that up just now. So, thanks a lot, Adam. <laughs> now I'm going to look into it. Because I'm still not the guy who built the one for me for my Explorer. He's, uh, we're friends on Facebook. Yeah. So I can track him down. His name's John Ness. And I'm like, hey, John, can you make me a black? I'm afraid, though, because like on the Explorer, the pit guard, it's flush against the body. Right. right it's on the body. On the Les Paul, it kind of sticks out from the body. Mm. Like, up, it's, it's kind of like at an angle. So the edge of that back black diamond plate is kind of sharp. So if it's not flat against the body, I'm afraid I might cut my hand on it or something. I guess they could round it over. I'll have to talk to John and see if that's possible. But yeah, I'm thinking about it now. Adam Lamar, who owns these three guitars, who Paul wants to buy one now. Mm -hmm. So uh, great question. <laughs> and that's it for this week. Yeah. Any, uh, any other questions? No. Anybody? Got a question? I'm good. Got a question? Never mind. That might take... <laughs> we might be here another... What would you uh, have on your album cover? A kitten or a dog? <laughs> the shark. Oh. Uh, I think uh, you have a snake, so I... You know, Pantera had a big rattlesnake. A snake and a reference. shark wrestling. Like a snake in the corner, like Rocky. In the corner... Like all coiled up in a corner of a boxing ring and a shark oh, on the other yeah, side. Snake. That'd be funny. And a kitten as the ref in the middle. Awkward pause. <laughs> that would be the awkward pause. <laughs> that would be funny. So what make that happen? I think the album should just be a pause button. <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> What's this? this? What are these little the bars? The <laughs> Two bars and a Z. Pause. With a big cat scratch across it, maybe. <laughs> All right, that's it for this week's uh, Ask I have Army. Album cover already. Oh, you got it planned? Yeah, Adam's gonna draw it up. Adam Lamar from Adam Warefoot. Adam Lamar from Warefoot. Getting lots of airtime, man. <laughs> it's like he's like the new Anthony. <laughs> Did we mention flip side music? Yeah, because he was texting. Well, I know he was texting. I didn't know if he said flip side music from Denver, Colorado. Flip side music from Denver, Colorado. Deep in the heart of Colorado, where they sh not flip side music. That's. Okay, let's just chop that up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we just edited a bunch out. <laughs> you can use your imagination. It wasn't me. It wasn't even Paul. It was my fault. I was talking about Ike <laughs> and Denver. Okay, so if you guys have a question for next week, just leave that below. Thank you for all the lovely comments. I went through and I tried to heart as many of those as I could. Mm -hmm. I'll try to go back in. And answer, you know, I like to go in and answer the comments, even if it's just say, hey, thank you so much. Appreciate you guys. <laughs> but sometimes I got stuff to do yeah. and I fall behind. Ask Angela. I, <laughs> yeah. I fall behind my chores quite often sometimes. Yeah. Ask Paul on my guitar chores. Yeah. <laughs> so well, my album's not done yet. It's really my fault. That's why I'm, I am the awkward pause in this band. <laughs> so. Thank you guys so much. Appreciate it. If you have a question for next week, I will cover that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> if you'd like to get an RNA Music t-shirt, there's a link in the description below. If you'd like a Bitter Bass Man t-shirt, there's a link in the description. Thank you guys so much for buying the t-shirts. That's really crazy. <gasps> oh, we have some really exciting news about t-shirts too. We'll bring that up maybe next week. If somebody asks, what's the uh, exciting news? Like what What's the it? exciting news about t-shirts, Ryan? You'll have to ask me next week. It's pretty exciting, though. Super exciting. Mm -hmm. And uh, we will see you guys in the next video. Until then, keep the music alive. Don't forget it. The music needs you. You need the music. We need to keep it alive for all the children mm -hmm. around the world. Yep. And all the middle-aged people like me. Like Baby Demand. And yeah, like all the Baby Demands in the world. They need the music to stay alive forever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and... Uh, Hashtag KTV. Mm -hmm. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. The end. Awkward pause. <laughs> Awkward pause.